So we recently covered the turmoil engulfing Ecuador after the U.S. ambassador there colluded with the nation's attorney general in what amounted to blatant foreign election interference, pushing the fake idea that the left-wing party of Rafael Correa was somehow responsible for the assassination of a rival presidential candidate. That smear campaign did the trick, and the heir to a banana fortune, Daniel Noboa, was elected with U.S. support. Now, the fact that the U.S., is still helping elect banana magnates 120 years after we coined the term banana republic suggests an extraordinary lack of imagination when it comes to our imperial managers. But at least now, the bananas double as cover for cocaine exports to Europe. Now, the goal of installing a right-wing government in a South or Central American country, of course, is to make way for American corporations to profit. The new mechanism we have to do that is called ISDS, or Investor State Dispute Settlement. Those are global courts that allow multinational corporations to sue sue small countries and overturn their democratically enacted labor or environmental protections, which the corporations claim inhibit their natural right to profit. Ecuador's Naboa, in taking office, moved immediately to bring those courts back after the government of Correa had gotten rid of them. Last week, in a Senate hearing, there was was a surprisingly honest conversation about those courts and our role in pushing them between Rhode Island Democratic Senator Sheldon Whitehouse and U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai. Take a listen. But I really think that there's something very evil about the entire ISDS mechanism. And it's perhaps best embodied by the attack through the ISDS mechanism of the tobacco industry on the little country of Togo. Togo had the nerve to try to control the packaging of cigarettes with warnings about tobacco's known health effects. And they were sued by the world tobacco industry, um, which has enormous resources at its disposal. Uh, Togo is a country of about 8 million people. It has less than 5,000 miles of roads. Its annual budget is about 1.2 billion. It is in no position to take on a international industry like that that can use it to first of all bully Togo into submission and then take that and leverage against other countries. In fact, the tobacco industry even ultimately went up against Australia and got themselves tangled up in the complexity of their effort. But that shows how evil this is. So the quicker we can get rid of that as a vehicle for putting private interest over public interest and putting size and weight over virtue, the better off we will be. And I'd ask for your thoughts on how we can remove ISDS from those existing agreements and treaties. Now, you don't hear American policy described as evil in the Senate very often, even though that label could often apply. Now, over the weekend, Naboa's effort to bring those courts back to Ecuador was required to go before Ecuadorian voters. And even though the ballot measure was written in the most confusing way possible, more than 60% of Ecuadorians said no. Now, a few weeks ago, We also reported on how the left-leaning government in Honduras is bucking the World Bank's ISDS court in its fight with crypto investors who have seized actual territory inside the country and are claiming they have actual sovereignty there. Both fights, the one in Ecuador and the one in Honduras, were subjects of protests at last week's annual World Bank IMF meetings held here in Washington. This comes as more than 300 economics professors urged the White House to strip these courts out of trade deals. Now, here's how Ty responded to Shelton Whitehouse. We're very, very interested in the views of members of Congress, especially those um, who sit on the Judiciary Committee and uh, are are good lawyers, indeed. We, um, the U.S. was responsible for pushing a lot of this ISDS nonsense into those treaties in the first place, correct? I think that's absolutely correct. Yeah, okay. Well, Godspeed, stay in touch with us on the conclusions that you draw. So what's really remarkable, Emily, about that that exchange is, first of all, White House uh, is, you know, being pretty clear in in how he's feeling about these. But that's that's one senator. You know, they they can they can make a video. You know, they can make an appearance at the Judiciary Committee, but they can't do a lot more than that. Uh, To have Catherine Tai basically agreeing with him, is kind of a sea change when it comes to, you know, U.S. trade policy. 